Growing up in the South was not an altogether unhappy experience for Fred Shuttlesworth. I was raised by my mother and grandparents, and my mother taught me a respect for God. She sent me to church. I've always looked forward to going to church. And the young Fred Shuttlesworth excelled at school. Rosedale High in a little village of Oxmoor, four or five miles from the heart of Birmingham. I graduated in 1940. I was the valedictorian of the class. Family responsibilities came quickly. So I married in 41 at 19, became a truck driver. But he was restive. He told his new wife, I feel like my life is designed to reach many people. Anyway, I'm going to school and just be prepared for whatever God says. After graduation, he first became a pastor in Selma and then got the call to Birmingham. He immediately involved himself in the civil rights movement. I joined in the NCP, and I began pushing them. We organized the Alabama Christian Movement for Human Rights. The Southern senators and representatives and governors, they were getting ready then to disobey the Supreme Court decision. A lot of people had never even registered to vote. He had people lined up to teach the folks how to vote. I was the first church in Birmingham to register all of his people. We started testing the laws. He would get out in the street and be in the front of the line for the marchings and demonstrations. Those of us who was out there did not know whether or not we would be killed. Reverend Shulwell stood up to him. I saw them when they had the water hose and the dogs on the children. He was hit by the force of the water hose and was knocked down. He had to be hospitalized too. We started having mass meetings. Every Monday night at a different church to inform the people and to get the fear out the heart. There were many of these historic meetings, but there was one in particular that will always be remembered. June 5th, 16th Street Baptist Church was crowded. I gave one of those rip rolls speeches. He told us we had to be non-violent. You don't do God's work with the devil's instruments. And that's the key to non-violence. I challenged him from the poor pit, and I said, do you want to be free, and do you want to organize? Fred Shuttlesworth's oratory galvanized the Birmingham movement. Bus protests and demonstrations grew. So did the dangers. He was shot at, he was jailed, had to fight his way out of jail through the legal process. They would try to outlaw people, just asking for freedom, asking for Negro police, which was a good thing then. The Ku Klux was riding around the church where he passed it. Well, the Klan decided I wasn't going to be around. He was bombed three times at the church. And that 16 sticks of dynamite exploded. It was a four from under my bed, and I didn't get a scratch. He was bombed, he was uh, hosed, he was uh, beaten by dogs. He survived all of these, he lost everything he ever had. God seemed to need to fight. It didn't slow him up a bit. It's just like putting grease on the axle. But you know, an injunction is an injunction. If you violate an injunction, you go to jail. I said, well, this must mean then jail, here I come. Gradually, the Birmingham protests brought about grudging changes, but not before. He was in, involved in criminal and civil litigation over 30 times, uh, he had some 25 criminal prosecutions against him. He saw injustice occurring, and he refused to be silent, even though it put his own life in jeopardy. I see him as a hero because he was the single most important person here in Birmingham that provided leadership for the civil rights movement. I thank God for sending Reverend Shuttlesworth to Birmingham. And Birmingham wasn't the only city in the South that benefited from Fred Shuttlesworth's leadership. He was one of the big three in the civil rights movement. Along with Reverend Martin Luther King and Reverend Ralph Abernathy. And Dr. King uh, had a tremendous amount of respect for, for Reverend Shuttlesworth and sought his help. Fred Shuttlesworth's open resistance to segregation actually predated Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s protest. Seven years before I invited Martin Luther King to Birmingham, we had already been having demonstrations. I was already getting beaten up and wounded. While the struggle in Birmingham raged on, Reverend Shuttlesworth answered a calling to become a pastor in Cincinnati. We welcomed him to Cincinnati uh, to help us in our fights and struggles here. Cincinnati at least was different that people in Cincinnati were committed. 
If you can have people you can talk to, that's better than people you can't talk to. Fred uh, was very much involved with a number of the civil rights issues uh, locally. It was uh, exciting to meet someone that you'd seen on TV. He was not afraid to f uh, face uh, opposition. He was even probably more non-violent than King was. Segregated facilities were still very prevalent in Cincinnati when Fred Shuttlesworth arrived here. I had a lead demonstration here because it was in me. I'm fighting for justice everywhere. He could take a march, and he could organize that march. And if we had 50 people, he could string people out and make it look like you had 500 people. And he would say, you know, I've got, I've got the jailhouse itch today. I haven't been to jail in a long time, and I kind of miss it a little bit. He is the most courageous man I've ever seen. To tell you the truth about it, if I'm not into something, trying to make some changes happen, I'm miserable. Because of his courage and the courage of other dedicated Cincinnatians, the shame of segregated facilities was eliminated from this community. Fred has been a person who really was trying to bridge the uh, r racial divide. He's had a tremendous impact here. And he draws people out. He was able to begin to get people to move away from a we, they, to us. Let's talk, let's communicate, let's see if we can't find a common ground. Whether you are black, white, male, or female, he really has paved the way. Fred really loves people, particularly the underdog. He established the Shuttlesworth Housing Foundation. And he put up so many uh, thousands of dollars of his own money so that poor families can get a grant so they can make the down payment on their homes. Nothing delights Fred more than being able to see a family that's together in a decent home. To me, that's one of the most rewarding things that I've got in my life. Fred is a living, walking testament of what the Judeo-Christian ethic is all about. We forget about that side of Fred. He is a person of God. His primary focus is to being a good shepherd. Uh, Fred clearly understands what the fatherhood of God is and the brotherhood of man. He loves Cincinnati. Cincinnati probably did not love Fred as much as Fred loved Cincinnati. He says, I love these people. I love this community. I love doing what I'm doing. Our community should be very proud of of what he's accomplished and what he's continuing to accomplish. He never gave up his vision of America and his vision of, of equality of all races. Fred Shuttlesworth was and is a soldier of freedom. If I could give my life today to end racism in America, I would do it. We have to recognize that God put all people on earth to dwell together. I believe that then, I believe it now. You should know the truth and the truth to make you free. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you a legendary American hero who honors us by becoming a great living Cincinnatian, the Reverend Fred S. Shuttlesworth.